This video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. Almost 30 years ago in 1995, an astronomer named Jeff Hester pointed the Hubble Space Telescope at the Eagle Nebula uh, because he was interested in uh, studying photo evaporation by looking at the nebula through different narrowband filters. And as part of his research process, he made a visualization, a full color image mapping the narrowband data according to the wavelength of each gas. And since S2 had the longest wavelength at 672 nanometers, that went into the red. H alpha at 656 nanometers went into the green, and O3 at 500 nanometers went into the blue channel. And he showed this resulting photo around to his colleagues, and they all agreed it was breathtaking. And of course, this became one of the most iconic space photos of all time and really helped boost the Hubble Space Telescope's reputation it, because it got good press in all the major newspapers and magazines all over the world. And I think... You know, NASA also did some brilliant marketing by calling it the Pillars of Creation, which is just a very cool name. It also popularized the use of mapping filtered data in chromatic order. This is sometimes called the Hubble palette. Well, now, as you all know, there's a new space telescope, the JWST, which has captured its own version of the Pillars of Creation, but in infrared light. And just like the Hubble, the JWST's you know, primary mission is, of course, science. It's figuring out the mysteries of the universe, looking at things like uh, extremely red-shifted galaxies or analyzing the spectra of an exoplanet. But also, just like Hubble, the JWST can produce amazing space photographs. And there are very talented staff at the Space Telescope Science Institute that make that happen because they edit the stage three data for the JWST into these beautiful full color visualizations that are then shared with the public. But what many people don't know is that you can download most of the data yourself from MAST, the Mikulski Archive for Space Telescopes. I did a previous video on just this, but in that video, I use the paid software PixInsight and Photoshop to process, and I've always wanted to do a follow-up with completely free software. And so that's what I'm gonna be showing today. My name is Nico Carver, and I invite you to edit along with me on the Pillars of Creation. Now, the biggest challenges I ran into were very large downloads. Uh, some of them were more than two gigabytes per filter and uh, as well as the different filters having different image dimensions and also not being perfectly aligned. So what I've done for this tutorial is I've taken care of all of the boring hard stuff for you. These three fits files at tinyurl.com slash JWST pillars have already been resampled to the smallest size. Um, so that allows us to have smaller file sizes and then they've already been aligned on the star patterns. So that's gonna be a lot easier for you to work with the data. If you do wanna explore the JWST data straight from MAST yourself in free software, there is good news because uh, the I2D files uh, are now open just fine in the new 1.2 version of Cyril. They didn't before, but now they do. And again, if you're new to all of this, it's gonna be easier to start with the FITS files I've already prepared uh, because they've already been resampled and aligned. Anyways, let's get going with the tutorial. Okay, as I mentioned, all the software I'm gonna be using is free, but let me just show you first where to get it. The first piece of software is called Cyril, S-I-R-I-L, and it's available at Cyril.org. It is cross-platform, so you can download it for whichever system uh, you have. It uh, is currently on version 1.2.0 beta 2, and I would recommend getting that re most recent version for this. The next program is the GNU Image Manipulation Program, available at gimp.org. It uh, is currently on version 2.10.34, and again, it's cross-platform. Three FITS files that I've prepared and put on Google Drive here to follow along with the tutorial. And so to download these, just you know, hover over one and click the download button and say, download anyway, and do that for each one. They're each about 100 megabytes. That's about as small as I could make them. Uh, and like I said, some of these were over two gigabytes before um, 
because they were just really big image dimensions and also there was a lot of uh, extra stuff uh, included uh, in the download that uh, we don't need for for this tutorial which is just sort of about making a pretty picture an aesthetic picture okay those are now downloaded the the fits files um one thing uh interesting to keep in mind is uh cyril only likes to open up fits files if they end in dot fit no s uh, so if you're downloading the original JWST data, I think it ends in .fits. So just you can just redo the file extension, and then they'll open up fine in in Cyril. But again, these are the ones that I've already uh, resized and aligned. Let's go ahead and open this with Cyril. I'm just opening one at random. This one is the F187N filter. Okay, and you can see when you open it, it just looks completely black. And that's because we are in a linear display mode, um, meaning all of the data is bunched up over on the left-hand side and we're not seeing anything. So if you just go down here and you wanna just sort of see what the data looks like, you can switch it to the auto stretch mode. And there we go, isn't that beautiful? So that's the pillars of creation in a particular uh, passband of, of infrared. Uh, light and this one uh, is what we're going to use for uh, blue if I remember right because you can see that uh, it looks really strong uh, it looks like it has a really strong blue background so uh, very nice the only thing that we have to do really before we bring it into uh, the GNU image manipulation program and and colorize it is stretch it and stretching it just means taking it from this uh, linear space um, to a non-linear space uh, we, we apply what's called a non-linear stretch meaning we're not just going to stretch all of the values linearly like we're not just going to multiply them we're going to uh, apply basically a curve instead and my favorite way to apply this curve is with the generalized hyperbolic stretch transformation. I know that's a mouthful, but we, we just call it GHS for, st for short now. This is a really cool um, way to stretch your data with a really nice curve. And I'll show you the way that uh, they recommend to use it and the way I, I use it for this first stretch. We're gonna turn on the auto stretch here and just find a dark uh, part of the image uh, it's in the sky background and just click and drag to make a little selection box there and then over here we're going to click on the eyedropper and what it'll do is it'll sample inside that selection box and tell you the value associated with the pixels in there and that's what is called the symmetry point where it's going to balance that curve and where it's going to add the most contrast to your picture so now I'm gonna switch it back to linear mode. And I'm going to increase this local stretch intensity. Let's say to, I usually like somewhere around like 12 to 15 for this first stretch, something pretty high. And then start pulling up the stretch factor and you'll start seeing that the image starts to come alive. We start seeing more and more of the image as we stretch more and more with this stretch factor. And one thing that they tell you in the instructions for this tool is to maybe initially do a stretch like this. So it's not showing much, but we can now see the data over here and go ahead and apply that. And then we'll move this uh, selection box to something a little bit brighter, something a little bit more in, right in the mid or, or uh, lower section of this uh, data right here. So we'll set the symmetry point again. And this time I'm not gonna do quite uh, an aggressive stretch intensity, maybe something like three. And we'll start stretching this out again. Okay. And at this point, I think that looks really good. I'm not, I don't want to, um, at this point, go too far. 
um, something like this is fine. I, I like to keep it a little bit more subdued uh, because we can always add more contrast later. But if we add too much contrast now, it's hard to sort of undo that contrast, if you know what I mean. So I like to just add, you know, a, a good amount of contrast now, but not too much. So something like this, I'm just saying something like this based on how it looks and it, just from doing this enough times. Okay, I'll go ahead and apply that and go ahead and close this. And so that's all I'm gonna do with this image at this point. So I wanna go ahead and save it because I'm gonna next open it up into the GNU image manipulation program. So I'll save it to my desktop as a TIFF file, just like that. Just so I remember, you know, this is a new file and TIFF uh, usually works well. Uh, so I'll go ahead and click save. And then I'm just gonna do that whole same process we just did with the other two files. And then let's open up our GNU image manipulation program. And I'll try open as layers and I'll open our three TIFF files. Okay, so we have our three TIFF files here. And remember, we're gonna go in chromatic order with uh, colorizing them. So what I'm gonna do is actually put the smallest number, the 187 here on the bottom. And the 335 in the middle and the 444 on top. And then I'll start, I'm gonna turn off the visibility of these first two, and I'll start with this one. And I'm gonna to go to colors, oh, colorize, and it's grayed out, of course it is, because we haven't told uh, the GNU image manipulation program that we want to work in an RGB color space. So we just have to go to the image menu and go down to mode and change it to RGB. And click convert. And now it's in RGB. So now if we go to the colors menu and go down to colorize, it will colorize that layer. Okay, now how do you pick the colors? Uh, this is a big you know, uh, question. If you go to uh, the JWST processing guide website, I'm sure I'll link it in the description, there are doc there's documents about how they uh, have mapped the colors. So you can just follow that if, if you wanna just uh, follow what they did. If you wanna play around and, and do it your own way, Again, I'm, uh, chromatic order is the most uh, common way to do this. So starting with this 187, I'm going to map it to blue. And then I'll turn on the next layer and I'll map this to a green. Okay. and. With that done, you can see that the right now the green layer is completely uh, covering up the blue layer. The blue layer is hidden. And this is just the way that these uh, Photoshop type programs work when you have the layers. Uh, right now it's on the normal mode with opacity set to 100%. So it's completely covering up the layer below. If we change the blending mode from normal to something else, we can then get a blend of the two layers. So I just changed it to addition. And then let's do the same thing with this last layer. We'll turn that one on and go to colors, colorize, and click on the color here and change it to a, actually I'm gonna do a sort of orangey red. And again, I'll change the mode from normal to addition. Okay, and so with that, we have our first sort of full color <laughs> version here. But if you don't like 
uh, how these colors came out. Here's the cool thing. You can go in here and just recolorize. So now that we have this all set up, I could just go back in and open up colorize again and pick a different color and live I can see what that uh, change you know what's happening with that change and what I always find really interesting about this colorizing process is uh, just through the intensity of the color, you can get a very different uh, final result. So for instance, if I make this middle layer, the 335M filter, this intense green, right? I get this very green result. But watch what happens if I just uh, desaturate that layer a little bit. Ooh, now that's looking really cool, right? It's 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 bringing out some of those uh, blues underneath, and and getting us a better mix with the reds uh, to see a little bit more than we were before. And honestly, uh, I could do this all day. You know, it's it's just a lot of fun for me just to play around with this um, until I get a result that I think is interesting. Um, you know, I know, I know others aren't like me and don't just like spending hours just sort of staring at colors, but for me, it's a lot of fun. So anyways, but let's just go over the basic process. You're going to colorize these three layers in some kind of chromatic order. So the, the bigger numbers are on the red side, the smaller numbers are going to be on your blue side, and then your median numbers are in between in the greens and yellows after you've done some kind of colorization you can make a new from visible layer and on this visible layer you can which is just a combination of what you have so far you can apply filters like unsharp mask or uh, continue playing with the colors um, so one way to do that is with this tool the hue slash saturation tool. So for instance, if I pick cyan, I can uh, change the hue of just the cyan in the picture, make it a little bit more blue. I can make it more saturated if that's what I'm going for. But be careful with this. Uh, it's, it's very easy to abuse this tool and get what we call uh, posturization if you're not careful. Uh, because there's not enough, um, a lot of times there's not enough data in between two colors to really uh, fill in if you're going if you're going wild with the <laughs> changing uh, the hues. So this is a dangerous tool, but it, it can it can be fun for for playing around with the colors. Okay, and then I'll, <laughs> I'm going from one powerful tool that's easy to use right to another. If you go to Colors Curves, this is another uh, very powerful tool that can completely change the look uh, and color balance in your picture. Because what you can do is you go and go up here to Channel and uh, just target, for instance, the red channel. And I think right now it's a little bit uh, low on red, so I can I can take that red channel up like that. But of course, that's very easy to then just to start washing out all this blue stuff that we got in our background. So what you can do is you can apply a curve to the red channel like I just did there. Something like that. And then we could do the same in green. We could uh, see if taking out a little bit of the green in the picture uh, helps with sort of the colors that we want to get. And I think this is starting to look really interesting. So you can see that just by sort of playing around with uh, these uh, color channels, you can do a lot with playing around with the colors in the image. Now that we have everything uh, balanced somewhat between the three filters. Okay, I basically ran out of time with this tutorial, so uh, let's go ahead and call it a day. To share your creation here with the world, you can uh, save or export it 
And uh, the way that this program works, the GNU image manipulation program, you just type in the file ending you want. So I could just do combined.jpg and click export to get a JPEG file that I could uh, share online. So I'd be uh, glad to see what you come up with. Uh, this has just been a, a quick tutorial to show that this is indeed possible with uh, free software. And I hope that uh, others will, will try it out. In this video, I just focused on the more artistic side of astrophotography, but I'm guessing if you're watching a video about data from a space telescope, you're into science and will love Brilliant. Brilliant.org offers interactive lessons on science and math so you can learn about physics uh, right in your own home in a really fun way through problem solving on their website. There are thousands of lessons already up and there are also new ones added every month. The lessons that I think you'll really like and that will really enhance your understanding of the JWST and the and telescopes in general um, are all in the course scientific thinking that I'm showing here on screen. So to try everything that Brilliant has to offer completely free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash nebula photos or click on the link in the description. The first 200 will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription after the free trial.